Hello, welcome everybody to Build Fly Go. So, ton of progress uh, this week. Um, some of you may have noticed uh, this past week and this week I've been working on this a lot more than before. And uh, it's because it's the holiday season in the US and my uh, employer has um, a shutdown for the week. So, we're, I'm not working. Mary is working. Um, so, you'll see her every so often, but not uh, throughout the day. But anyway, so we are working uh, this past week, we have closed up the center fuselage, which is what you're seeing there. Uh, we put the skins on and you'll notice uh, shortly, Mary and I are gonna start riveting that. And there's quite a few rivets there. It's not a crazy amount, but it took us a few hours. Um, it's just sort of part of doing it. These are not hard to, to reach at all. Um, they're very accessible and especially like this way, um, I have very easy access to the back of the rivets, so we just went down down the lines. One of the things I like doing in um, a big skin like this is you sort of start in the middle and you go outwards, right? You don't you don't want to because every time you're sort of stretching the skin a tiny little bit when you're pounding on it like this, and the skin sort of settles into place as well. So you want to make sure that you don't um, sort of put yourself into a corner where it got a little tight or, or something like that, and you have to start reaming things to make them fit. But anyway, so that's 90% uh, of that skin got done there, and we took a break for the night, and you're seeing me start work on the firewall right now. So the firewall on the RV-10 is leaning against the, the, the center fuselage right there, sort of in the center of the frame uh, above that box of Clicos. And all of these pieces that I'm deburring right now, and it uh, looks like I'm drilling in... Yeah, it looks like I'm drilling and clicking and other things are stiffeners for that firewall. You can see me start to click them in place, um, and they they sort of create the structure that um, adds rigidity to the firewall, where the because the engine mounts to the front of that, right? So you see. Um, the white weldments on the corners are where the main structure of the airplane attaches to the firewall. And, uh, of course, at the same time, that is where the load transfers to the engine mount on the front of the firewall. So there are bolts that will go through um, a lot of those, those weldments. Um, this is, the firewall is made out of stainless. It is incredibly sharp. Um, the, there's a couple of warnings in the, the manuals and I'm aware of it being incredibly sharp and yet I still managed to cut myself on it. So, um, you will too. <laughs> um, so I suggest the first thing you do with that firewall, as soon as you, you get it out is deburr it. It is not hard at all to deburr. You just, just run the scotch right wheel down it, get the burrs off and sort of smooth off the edges and you're done. And that's it. It takes like five minutes. Um, so you notice that I managed to get through all of the uh, firewall stiffener parts, all those little metal pieces, and uh, we're getting them primed. Um, my uh, fancy new paint booth is getting a lot of action uh, this past week. Um, I don't know that there's actually another round. Of, no, there's one more round of priming, I think, after this. And um, the uh, w wonderful yellow bunny suit that I got uh, has, has been doing a good job. I do need to change the respirator, and I have um, ordered a new sort of respirator hood. Um, the one, th my beard has been getting a little bigger over the uh, sort of pandemic shutdown. <laughs> I haven't been trimming it, so I'm getting a lot of breakthrough um, of uh, sort of the nasty primer gases coming through um, the mask in my beard. You, you're seeing here, there's a big metal plate. You see that? Um, so I'm back riveting the uh, those pieces now onto the onto the firewall. So you you've seen me back rivet with a you know sort of a big bucking bar. You can also do it with a metal plate, like a heavy metal plate like that. Um, the, the trick here is you want to make sure that it is uh, tight against the firewall. And it's a little finicky here because the flange on that firewall faces forward. But alas, uh, we got most of it done and Mary helped me um, with a... Uh, do actual regular riveting for the rest of them. What we're doing here is actually a modification. So th these are the what we call the tunnel sections um, in the uh, that go in between the front passenger, the front people's um, feet, if you will, 
Um, and there isn't an opening. You'll notice on the piece on the on the table right now, I just cut a big rectangular opening in there. So one of the vendors makes a nice little, well, one of them, <laughs> maybe not nice. They make a uh, access panel that you can rivet in and you cut up a cut out a thing. Um, it's expensive. And honestly, it saves you time, but uh, they send you the wrong nut plates, they send you the wrong screws, it's drilled to the wrong size. I Honestly, I almost sent it back. I was just like this close. I was so annoyed at it because um, it's expensive, right? I mean, like you're, you're paying them to save you time and they totally screwed up like eight different things on this. <laughs> so anyway, um, I made it work. I just drilled new holes in it um, and uh, I just dealt with some of the holes being in the wrong place and I used my own nut plates and I just added the nut plates that they included into my stock of nut plates and I'll just order more nut plates of the ones that I used. Um, it, it probably still saved uh, a good bit of time, but it's annoying that you pay for something that's supposed to, you know, it's easy for them not to screw this up and yet they screwed it up four different ways. Anyway, I'm done talking about this. <laughs> so anyway, those are the two um, that I cut those out. Okay, so the reason for this, now that I've done with my rant, is um, in the, the tunnel is where the fuel pump and the fuel valve and a lot of the heating ducts for like uh, cabin heat are. And you, when the airplane is, a, is completed, there's a cover that goes over the top of that. And it's, from what I hear, it is very difficult to get tools in there and such if you need to move things around. Uh, so people will usually just cut an access panel um, into it. So I'm just saving myself time from having to cut an access panel later. And I just put a access panel on both sides and, um, you know, I'm riveting it and putting it back together. So uh, with that being done, um, so you can see now that the firewall is sort of on the left there and I have the, the tunnel, if you will, um, clicoed into place. So you can see what it looks like, right? So that mates to what is the bottom of the uh, big fuselage piece that's on the table right now. Of course, there's a skin that goes there. You'll see this more uh, later as we, in, in the following week as we finish this up. So there's a few weldments, there's a bit of drilling and riveting, you know, it's, it's the usual process, right? I mean, you, you get a part, you spend a bunch of time deburring, you spend a bunch of time drilling and dimpling, and then, uh, and then you prime it if you're going to prime it, and, uh, and, and you continue. Um, I've gotten to a point there where I, I'm on the phone apparently, <laughs> um, I needed uh, Mary's help to do stuff, so I am looking ahead. This is really like something that I urge you guys to consider is when you're building, you're going to get to a point where you're stuck, you need help, you need an extra set of hands or something like that. I'm just looking ahead. I'm looking at the next section of the plans and figuring out which parts need to be deburred, which parts need to be prepped and things like that. Um, and that's what I was doing. I was just getting those parts ready. And then I just put them aside and Mary is here now. So we're going to rivet the, um, the, the rivets that I was unable to do by myself or that would have you know, would have been nicer to do with a helper. Uh, you notice uh, the little red piece on the front of the rivet gun. Go to Instagram and see my post about that. They're, they're um, rivet socks. Um, we found them really nice, uh, a nice way to, to make nice rivets. Um, but yeah, we're, we're coming sort of to the end of this week. Um, this is January 1st now. It was the end of 2020. And uh, I am now working... So put that aside, it's it's against the, the paint booth there and I'm working on the floor sections and some other bits that go in there. All right, thanks everybody as usual. Uh, please subscribe, please um, hit the little buttons or whatever to notify you, you know the drill. And we'll talk again soon. Have a good night. <laughs>